Hey guys, me like big boom here and welcome to Unturned 3.15.3.0. This week's update was freaking awesome as always and I think it, this one especially, we've got new sentry turrets. We now have an even better way of building bases underwater with the new oxygenators as they're called. We have new libraries, a way of storing and transferring experience between players as well as placeable and craftable furniture. Lots and lots of awesome stuff in this update. Let's get right into it. Now starting over here on the left we have these new libraries. These look like bookshelves and they come in maple, birch, pine, and metal. Now these are really cool ways of depositing experience. So let's say you have max skills for whatever reason or let's say you're playing with a friend and you just went to Alberton and killed a bunch of zombies and you want to transfer your experience over to your friend. Well you would go over to a library once you've actually crafted it and you're able to deposit experience into the library. Now in this case I have max skills and let's say I want to give my 312 extra experience to my friend I would put it on the deposit mode. I would put in 312 for my experience. It's got a 32 experience tax just it's going to take away 32 experience just by transferring it into the library and 280 is actually going to be transferred into the library. It has a capacity of 900 for the maple 800 for the birch, 1000 for the pine, and then 1200 for the metal. And then also metal can only be accessed by you or the people in your group. Additionally, since this only takes 10% each time you deposit experience into here and dying takes away 25% of your experience, if you feel like you are about to raid a base and it might be unsuccessful and you want to make sure that your experience is safe, you can deposit your experience into the library beforehand and if you somehow die on that base raid, when you respawn back at home, you'll be able to take that experience out of the library by setting it to withdraw, setting the number to 280 or whatever there is, and then you'll be able to take that experience out losing only 10% instead of 25% when you died. But anyway, very cool. You can store and transfer experience. That's how they work in a nutshell. I think it's a pretty cool idea. You guys should comment your thoughts down below as well as on the pull card. Also, the crafting recipe for these will be on the screen right now. Moving on to the oxygenators. Now, these are very cool. Now, you might be wondering this entire time, like, I, I my entire base is underwater. Like, we are doing this update video underwater. I am perfectly okay. Uh, I am breathing healthily underwater don't worry about me I'm not drowning these are really cool so these look like safe zone generators and regular generators except these uh, once powered on start spewing out bubbles and uh, allow you to breathe underwater and be able to successfully have an underwater base like what I have here very cool so these have a crafting recipe that's on the screen right now and they require power I have a large industrial generator up underneath this uh, metal roof here so pretty cool so that that's what's really allowing me to stay underwater for an infinite amount of time, well, as long as the gas lasts in that industrial generator, but I'm able to swim around in my underwater base here. Underwater bases, like, they, I think they are kind of your best bet um, when it comes to having an impenetrable base. Uh, they're hard to raid, you can't equip primary weapons underwater, and then also not to mention they're really hidden. I mean, they're freaking underwater. Moving on to some of the new furniture, these are really cool. So before we had to place down crates and then, and then lockers, I think those were our two different options for storage. Now we have tons. We can place um, our items inside of these cabinets and we can also place them inside of these sinks and we also have refrigerators and stuff like that uh, for us to store our items and also not to mention these look cool. You can make a house. Now of course as you can probably tell already these come in maple, birch, pine and metal and then the metal can only be accessed by the people who place them down. The crafting recipe for the counter will be on the screen right now. Now this is a little unknown thing but same with crates. Maple has 3 by 5, birch has 3 by 4, pine has 3 by 6 and then metal has the biggest with 3 by 7. This also applies to the sinks. These are the same. And then the refrigerator over here doesn't come in different colors, but it has a 4x6 storage capacity. The stove is a cool little campfire that you cannot get burned on, and then it also just, of course, looks cool. Crafting recipe for that will be on the screen right now, as well as the fridge. And you know, I'm just not going to tell you, I'm just going to make it show up each time I look through all these items. But yeah, this works as a fancy smancy little campfire, except you can't get burned on it, so there's that. And then also we have this lamp that can be turned on and off once it's been powered, which I have that generator up there. And then we have a couch that just serves no purpose except for letting you sit on it. But I put my couch underwater, probably not the best place to put a couch, and especially since we can't sit on it, but 
it's for decoration. And then over here we have a cot. This was back in Unturned 2.0. It's been needed in Unturned 3.0 for a very long time. All it really does is it works the same as a bedroll. You put it down, you can claim it or unclaim it or whatever, and then you'll respawn in it. Except this one requires metal to make it as well as cloth. And then this one has quite a bit more health than its bedroll cousin. Now you guys might've been bothered by this little spotlight that's going back and forth. That is the new sentry gun that I've currently turned into a little bit of a spotlight because the gun that I put in the sentry gun has a little tack light on it. I thought that was so cool. So even if you put an attachment on the weapon, when you put it in the gun, it's gonna turn it into a little spotlight here and it allowed us to create that cool little uh, prison-like scanning system that was going on in the introduction with those spotlights at nighttime. But anyway, that's not really the point of the sentry gun. The sentry gun is a gun. It shoots people and this is the major thing that was added in this week's update. Now in order to craft one of these you're going to need a spotlight, rifle rack, and rangefinder. It may not seem that crazy to craft it and you know it's going to be pretty easy to create one of these but the real hard part is maintaining it. You're going to need to be constantly powering it and also you're going to need to put a weapon into it and then also you're going to need to be manually reloading that weapon whenever it runs out of ammo. So right now you'll notice that this currently does not have a magazine in it. So when it goes to shoot people, it's not going to do anything. So I need to access this, take the weapon out, equip the weapon, of which I'm not going to be able to do because it's underwater. Please stand by. Equip the weapon, reload it, then head back in underwater, and then put it into the storage rack. Now this is ready to go. Now it will shoot at any intruders that come down that ladder. And then when it eventually runs out of ammo, we'll have to take it out and repeat that whole reloading process again. All right, so I logged onto the server using a different account to showcase how the damage and accuracy uh, works on these sentry guns, as well as some tricks that you can use to hopefully get past these sentry guns. Now with two sentry guns on each side and a locked door here, it's gonna be pretty much impossible to get inside this base without destroying those sentry guns, but I'm still gonna show you what happens if you try to approach this base. It's not happening, it's, it's don't even try. Now if I wanted to get inside this base, first I'd have to identify that there are sentry guns out in front. Then you would have to use some sort of sniper, you'd have to uh, de destroy, you'd have to do your best to destroy them. In this case we have two of them. So it's gonna make it pretty it's gonna make it pretty tricky, but luckily they do not have that much health. I believe they have 150 health, so the Timberwolf doesn't do that much barricade damage, so I wasn't able to get both of these guys, but they do have 150 barricade health, so uh, they're not terribly difficult to destroy. Two sticky grenades will get them, three regular grenades will get them, especially one breaching charge. Jesus Christ. Now if you approach the sentry guns with your hands up, it will lock onto you but it won't shoot you. So this will allow you to actually go up to the base and talk to the people. Hello, hello, is there anybody in there? Can you disable your sentry guns, please? And then they say, sure, yeah, I disabled it. And then you're like, woohoo, I can stop surrendering. No, they lie to you. What did you learn today? Trust no one. Now you can put in any sort of firearm into the sentry turret, whether it's an LMG, or a maple strike, whatever it is, the LMGs are gonna be the best. I mean, these have huge ammo capacities. They're very accurate, especially when put on, onto a sentry gun. Um, the, you don't need to reload them as often. It's just, those are gonna be your go-to choice. Put an LMG in the sentry turret. Uh, you can put in a maple strike, or you can even put in a pistol, uh, but it's not the smartest idea. They do not have that much ammo. The instant somebody walks up to it, if you put like a Colt in there, it's probably not gonna be able to kill them. It's gonna run out of ammo. It's not a good idea, okay? So you gotta put in weapons that have huge ammo capacity and it will still apply the same damage values as everything so this sentry gun is going to be doing more damage than this one because I put in a better weapon in here and also it does not have any headshot or leg shot multipliers it's always a body shot now of course this is a new addition and it is going to require some tweaking so be sure to head into a multiplayer server test it out actually trying to craft it in the real world with survival not spawning it in Nelson would like to know your thoughts on it so be sure to voice your suggestions once you've given it a try the last minor change that we've experienced in this week's update was the option to swap between static and dynamic hit markers, the new hit markers that were added last week. You can now choose whether or not you want the old version or the new version. Pretty cool. That's really the only notable tweak that was in this week's update, but there were still other improvements and tweaks and fixes that I did not cover in this video. But if you guys would like to check those out, as always, I will put the full update post in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to rate, comment, subscribe. And do all that gibberish because me like big boom is out.